Hey Tool Talk fans, uh, I am back and we are finally going to put in the ARB air locker. And uh, today's video I'm going to try to show you with as much detail as possible um, just what it really takes to, to put this in there. The other part of this that we have to pay attention to is once we get the bearings on and the airline that goes on here, you'll then put the bearing on on this end. And then this is going to use the same shim pack that I started with uh, on the stock axle. Um, this is my brand new bearing. I got uh, bearings in the mail uh, recently, and you know it was uh, worry for worrisome for me because I, if you looked at my previous pinion video, I had to take the pinion to a shop to get pressed on. But what I have here is you can see the ring, the uh, bearing actually sl slipped on pretty easily. I didn't heat it up. I didn't cool anything. This is all room temperature in uh, my little garage off the side of my house. Uh, it's more like a storage closet, but. Uh, it's all I've got out here in Guam, so uh, I'm in a good place. I'm in a clean area. I've got a lot of my parts sitting here um, ready for install or ready to be reused. And on this, I used one of my um, Lyle uh, bearing race. Um, it's the uh, bearing race tool that I showed you previously. And this is for um, just normally installing seals and pinion this is the specifically the pinion bearing tool. I grabbed the one from up here in the corner. It ends up being a perfect fit on the lip. You don't want to bang on the race cage because this will bend and then ruin your bearings. It will cause them to rub or run, run on one side. Um, this actually slips down in and fits in there perfectly. I started to just tap it. Now I have a ball peen hammer. I've got some heavier hammers. I ended up using something just a little bit more. Uh, you can do, go with a lighter hammer. This doesn't have to be beat on, but I just wanted to show you that I just tapped this down with a three pound hammer and it, start, it started going on right away. So this, the, the interference here is very, it's tight, but it doesn't need a press. As long as you're press, pushing on the edge of the bearing right here, not the edge of the housing, not the the race cage or the race uh, where the uh, sorry not the race the um, the bearings actual uh, holding the bearings together is the cage. You see this moves around. You don't want to beat on that. It's this middle part with the writing. I'm putting it on the edge of that, so it's not sitting on this. It's sitting down inside it. See. So I'm doing that, and then I'm tapping this down. That's good, and I'm on concrete, so there's I've got a little protection here under the on the floor here, and then when we flip it, see how it's moved down a little bit more at a time each time. And then um, just making sure that's seated all the way all the way down. This I did notice that uh, this part of the housing is designed differently than the stock housing on this part. This lip is much larger this in this direction from here to the edge of the housing. 
than this is. So you're gonna have a little bit of a lip, which I kinda like because once I smack that down and, and we're there, you'll see that this doesn't go all the way quite down as deep as it would on the stock carrier. This isn't gonna affect anything, but what is nice is that now that I've tapped it on there with something that fits, I don't have to worry about hitting the edge of the housing and trying to get this down over a lip. It sits right where it should be on that side. So um, that's about all I have for that side and uh, we'll move on to the other side now. All right, so what I'm working on right now is I'm going to have to, before we put the, the bearing that I've covered in my previous videos, before we put this on here, I have to put the airline that will pressurize that little hole right there. That comes as a billet actuator piece. There's airline holes right here. And then this seal completely surrounds the housing. So as it spins in the differential, at any given time, there's air traveling in this entire crevice between, as you can see here, between the, the two seals. So there's air pressurizing between the two seals at all time, going to this little hole, and then they're gonna line up at any given point as the diff spins with that hole. So it can be confusing, but as this spins, that airline's constantly surrounding it like a pillow on both sides. And there's no air escaping. So it goes right into there. These are Viton seals, V-I-T-O-N. They're, uh, they're also used, the Viton material is also used for like uh, lifters and uh, or seals around your, around your engine. These seals right here, uh, the Viton seals have, um, are a really amazing elastomer material that is also used in your engine for your valve seals and uh, they keep oil out but they allow a lot of friction and heat without breaking down like rubber would. So these will give me a long, long life for air lockers and uh, they're not too difficult to replace. Once you've done a diff, uh, changing these things out would be a breeze. Um, but you know, first time, it seems like this is incredibly putting a little bit of the oil in the cap here from Roll Purple. And, you know, the first time we change these out, it seems like it's a monumental task. But once you do anything once or twice, it becomes easier. So I'm going to take a little oil on my finger, and then I'm just going to rub it on the seal here. And this is going to make it easier to apply the seal to the housing. A little bit of oil inside is not going to hurt anything because there will be ever so slightly a, an amount of oil at any given time running around the diff. So this is pretty minimal. So you're going to, um, you can see that there's a recess here for the bearing. It's not going to be that side with the writing on it. That's uh, the part number there for my ARB if you can replace this. These are brazed copper tubing on here and then this just gets twisted down on so this is not anything too crazy but to assist it you want to make sure you give it a nice spin if it's if it's it's going to be tight but if you can't get this thing to spin you probably got a twisted seal and those seals are square they're actually very square and as if they're squared up on the housing and they're squared up here you'll be able to use your fingers to, to turn this a little bit. So it is very stiff, but I feel pretty good about that. We'll take it off and we'll run it one down one more time just to show you the seals. They're square in there. They actually look kind of, they're not like a, a round a round type seal that you see like um, uh, for other, uh, other axle purposes or are, um, they can get twisted. You'll see like a turn, like a half turn in them. Uh, if they're anywhere twisted. So I'm gonna give this one good look over. Got a nice coating of oil on everything. Everything seems to be good. And then I'm just gonna, to assist in the seating of this, you gotta get it as square as possible. Just start to turn it a little bit. As you push it down, it pops right on. And there you have it. You now have your ARB, airline actuator installed. And now we're going to press on this bearing. All right, so I have the I have the bottom of this already on, as you guys watched in the video, 
and then I have that same seal and race installer sitting below that to keep it from damaging my bearings and I'm on a very solid surface I'm on concrete uh, so I'm in my garage and I'm gonna bring this up to to here I'm gonna use another I'm gonna use another seal race uh, pinion installer uh, this really has been paying for itself this is a good tool that's the uh, Lyle kit that I showed in my previous videos. I'm going to line my bearing up. So I'm going to put a little bit of high pressure grease on there. i use some uh, royal purple. Alright, so I'm going to use that little cap earlier I poured of royal purple. And you can use high pressure grease here, whatever it is you like to use. I have the royal purple here, so I'm going to Lightly coat everything. And this just a this is just gonna assist the bearing to go down on onto the housing easier. Alright, and here we go, moment of truth. Get everything squared up. You don't want to put any pressure on the bearing cage. If you, if you bend it, you're going to have to buy new bearings, and they're about $40 each. So, I'm just going to get this started, squared up as much as you can. That's why I'm trying to use all of, all of the tools I can to square this entire housing up all at once. And that way when I get a good smack on it, it'll start. press would be better here but on a carrier it's such a short amount of movement you're putting it down you don't have to go farm that out if you don't want to if you want to use a press here that'd be ideal but I'll show you this can this can work as well we're just taking our time giving a couple smacks making sure it's squared up you can see it's going down now I don't have it out around or off the one side or the other. We're almost there. Everything's still moving freely. The important part is to get it all the way down. If it's not square, it's not gonna it's not gonna give me my gear pattern I need. So I got a couple bangs on there and I can feel it kind of reflecting. So that's as far as I can go on there with with this. But um it's still about a couple thou lower at the housing than it is at the bearing, so I know I'm all the way down. That doesn't make sense. Um, it's kind of hard to explain without taking the bearing back off and showing you. The bearing is seated all the way down because when I give this taps and it reflects like it did, I know. <clears throat> excuse me. I know that it's it's all the way down because it it you get a nice bounce back. This thing is as high, as far down as it's going to go. And I still have a lip here. So what that tells me mechanically is that it's not striking the housing. It's striking the bearing because I still have a lip there. So I know I'm all the way down. And that's all you have to worry about because ARB built those. When I called them, because I did notice that the stock housing over here that you have on the on the uh, left side of the video, it might be your right side, the um, housing has a much taller lip, which kind of doesn't aid in the the install because you have to overcome the lip to get it down further onto the surface bearing surface here here the bearing surface is slightly lower than the bearing itself so when I smack that on there this I know that I'm smacking the bearing and not the not the housing surface okay so that's pretty much the end of just the uh, the small video is going to be just you know wrapping up the install of the bearings and um, the actuator onto the ARB. Uh, this is kind of an at home best case scenario. You can install bearings at the house. You can install the ring gear at the house if you just heat it up just enough. Because if you try to put it on cold, that ring's not going to go down on there. So it's uh, kind of you know, kind of heard my excitement just that they're just so I was thankful to to get that on there. So I'm going to wrap this one up and then um, I've already got the front diff put back together. 
The next video is coming tomorrow, and uh, be watching out for that. Click like and subscribe, and this should get you uh, to the next step. Uh, tomorrow's video will be the actual diff, full diff install. I just have so much material to go through. I just want to make sure that I am um, being cautious as to what I'm putting in there and the specifications and all of the things that I'm doing, just so I make sure that the video is good. So thanks, guys. Uh, we'll see you again.